going to jump right into it. I already took the screen off. I was ready to get going. I thought I'll do a video because there's a couple tricks in here that I will show you that aren't included in some of the other videos I've watched online. And it may save you um, from damaging this worse. Like the big one is the screen falling off later after you've done the whole repair because the tape didn't stick. The stuff I used will be in the video description. So if you want to get exactly what you saw me use, just check out the links in the description below. For the record, what's my issue with this? I cannot get past the password screen. When I log in, I type in the uh, password and it locks up. I cannot, the whole thing boots, everything. And I've reinstalled the OS, I've did the PRAM, all that kind of, I did everything. So hopefully I swap this, I'm gonna put it in a solid state and uh, maybe this goes in an external. I'm gonna see if I can pull all my information off. All right, before we go any further, two quick things. Your model number is gonna be right here in that writing there, in case you need to double check that for some reason. And if you're doing a quick RAM swap, you don't do it through the glass. Right down here on the back is the housing for the RAM. You push that in there and there you go. You can access the clips. You just push these back. You got, you can pop them out, okay? The older iMac had the glass held on by magnets. This one is held on by double-sided foam tape and the glass and the screen are combined into one. You break the glass, you, you broke everything, you gotta replace it. Okay, it's, it's a little unforgiving, so you wanna be careful on this part. This is what we're gonna be cutting through to get the monitor off this stuff. You're gonna find that this style of razor blade is much superior to this one only because it's a lot thinner. So you're gonna be able to get it in between the glass. And you're gonna put it in if you measure right there, <clears throat> excuse me, if you measure in, it's going to be five sixteenths deep. So just over a quarter of an inch. And I think that's about eight millimeters, if uh, I'm not mistaken. So I started in the corner. I lifted it up just a little bit with my fingernails and I ran the tape here to the middle. And you're going to be able to feel the foam that you're cutting through. So you're going to know. But do a little bit and then leave a razor blade in like that. Then get another razor blade, again, not this style, and go and you can leave it in. It's going to help separate, keep the glass separated so it makes it a little easier to cut. So here is the screen. Again, you can't separate these two. Be super careful with it when you take it off. So this is going to sit in here like this. This tape, obviously, you don't cut off. You cut off the top, the sides, and then you can just pull it down carefully and it will... Um, rip itself apart down here, okay? There's two, uh, two cables that this attaches. I'll show you that close up. So you're gonna detach the cable from here and you just kind of wiggle and pull it. It just has some little plastic tabs that kind of depress on their own. So just carefully wiggle it out and it'll come up that way. This one has a latch just like this one. So you have to release the latch to allow the cable to slip out. You're going to grab this little plastic tab, lift this lever up, and allow you to pull this one out. So you're going to detach those cables while the monitor's in this position like that. And you're going to leave this attached here at the bottom. Do these cables, and then super careful, um, fold this down. It'll rip off of that uh, tape there and then put it aside in a spot that's not going to get knocked, bumped. You won't drop a tool on it. Again, don't break it. You won't be happy. Here's the parts I bought. All right, I'm gonna install this Samsung solid state drive. This is the mounting bracket. And then here is the uh, replacement foam tape. This is the thermal sensor for the hard drive. This hard drive will communicate to the computer and tell it its temperature. If you put in a hard drive that doesn't do that, like this one, doesn't have that sensor, it won't be able to know the temperature. So the computer by default will just kick on the fan full power and it will drive you nuts. It is really loud and it won't turn off. The second the computer's on, it's on full power. You're going to hate it. So make sure it's a compatible new hard drive with the thermal sensor in. If you're not gonna put one in, you need to buy, see this thing? It glues onto the hard drive and it goes in between this cable and, uh, and it communicates with the computer and so the fan is not going to be running full blast.
Okay, a few things happened since the last scene. It's been a few days, actually. I didn't want to just ditch the hard drive in here with all my info. I really wanted to try to get all my data off, and I went back to chat with Apple, which at first seemed really helpful, and I thought, man, these, this is pretty good, um, but their suggestions were, you know, everything you could kind of figure out on your own, and uh, so they said, eventually, you know, there's nothing they can do. So I'm going to make a whole separate video on that, um, but basically, I can get my data off of here without their help. They were of no use, and I'm actually quite upset about it. Here is the solid state drive. We're going to go to my working MacBook, put uh, the latest OS on here, and then put this in an external drive and, and, and try and pull off as much data onto this one. To make a hard drive run a Mac operating system, we have to erase it and reformat it. I opened up Disk Utility. You can select the drive you want to reformat. Make sure you select the right hard drive. You can see it shows up under a different name. Over to the right, you see it's the two terabyte. Do not accidentally erase a good drive or some other drive you have connected because you can't undo this. So it's selected, I hit erase, give it a name. Under format, select extended journaled and GUID. Should only take a few seconds. I'm going to close that. Open up the App Store. Download a copy of the new OS. Then it'll ask where you want to install it. Select the two terabyte drive, hit continue. As this is going to take a while, we'll come back in a bit. If you want, you can put it in an external case and run it through USB. That's what I'm going to do right now, and then transfer off all the data on my old Mac. By default, the Mac's going to boot off the internal hard drive. We need to tell it to boot off of the USB drive. So right after you turn it on, hold down the Option key. Then any drive hooked up to your computer will show up, and it'll ask you which one you want. Select the external drive, enter in your Wi-Fi settings, and then just go through all the regular steps you would when you're setting up a new Mac. When this window shows up, you have the option to transfer all your data or some of it. So I'm going to try and grab everything. This is going to take about seven and a half hours. There's two brackets that hold this hard drive in. We're going to leave in this one, take out this one. Speaker's in the way, so we're going to take out these two. Uh, screws there, then we can get it out. Now these are T8. Feels like you could use a T9, but do not drop these screws down here. Since this solid state is so much smaller than this hard drive that we took out, we need a bracket. There's four screws, holes on the bottom. That matches the four in the bracket. I'm going to put that there. Also, if you flip it around, see this little notch? That is so that you can use the connector right there. Next, we're going to steal the posts off of this hard drive and use them on the new bracket. The threads from the old post do not match the threads on the bracket. Just push hard while you're turning it and it goes in. So now this bracket goes on like that. We're gonna shove that back in. And again, we are not going to drop these screws. Be super careful. It 
It's the thermal sensor. It has a little bit of sticky tape. We're going to put that right about there. And it stops this computer from go <laughs> going nuts. It's only going to go on one way, so you can't really screw this up. in case there's some greasy fingerprints. I'm going to clean it off with some alcohol there. Our next step is to peel off all this old sticker residue around the entire frame. You want to make sure you get it all off and it's really clean. You can see it just peels off mostly. Run your finger along it when it's done so that uh, you know it's secured. So right down here is the microphone port and they say to cut a gap so you don't cover that up. All right, I have the back of the display on my lap and you can see there's just the other half of this foam tape that we have to remove. So same thing, peel it all off. But these last two strips, you can see they have kind of an L shape there. They're going to go right here, and then the other one will go right there. And you stick these onto the display itself. Pretty simple. And there's a whole video, uh, I guess, online that um, you can watch about this product and how to put it on. It's not too hard. Okay, this next step you can take under advisement, um, but there are enough people online that complain that these adhesive strips do not hold. Now maybe that's because they didn't do a good job of cleaning everything off. Maybe they didn't do a good job of pushing it together once the glass, the screen was back on. I'm not going to take that risk. I already have a little silicone. Now, never thought I'd use silicone on a computer, but I'm going to put a little bit of 100% clear silicone. This is just the junk you'd get from Home Depot. It's like a dollar something a tube. It's real cheap. A little dab in this corner, a little dab in this corner. I removed a, a tiny bit of the tape and roughed up the surface. And uh, I'm going to put the screen on and tape it on for at least 24 hours. Let the silicone dry. That way um, the screen won't fall off later. Look at the reviews on some of the people have used this tape. And um, I don't know if it's a different brand. Maybe it's a bad batch. I'm not going to take the risk. People have um, commented that they heard a crash a few days later. They come in, the screen's off and busted. And those are not cheap. So, you know, it is cheap silicone. <laughs> so a little blob in this corner, this corner. I mean, you could do one in the middle if you wanted. Remove the sticker. Don't put it over the uh, sticker. And uh, anyway, just a little extra precaution that I'm going to take. You do what you want. That's what I'm doing. Do I think that this tape will fail? No. It seems pretty good to me. But I would really kick myself if I uh, felt compelled to do this step and didn't do it and it broke. Just like that. All right, now the fun part. This is awkward to film, so sorry. I 
I got my knee under it to keep it at an angle. So that it uh, doesn't slide off the bottom lip. Okay, before I remove all that adhesive tape all the way around the edge, I'm going to uh, plug it in, turn it on, make sure the screen works. Let's say I damaged the cable or a cable wasn't seated uh, perfectly or maybe the hard drive wasn't seated perfectly. I don't want to have to cut all that tape off again. It's easy right now, once it's all hooked up, test it, shut it down, and then I'll open it up and we'll permanently seal it, all right? All right, success. Tape off. There we go. And very firmly, several times, push against the edge. Okay, so you will get a little bit of silicone coming out. Um, you don't need much on there, just a little dab. All right, so while this is fresh and the silicone is fresh, I'm going to have a little bit of painter's tape here and here, tight while it's drying so I don't have any surprises later and have this fall off. All right, I hope this has helped you. If you have any tips uh, for anybody else doing this, something I missed, something I should have covered, maybe a different or better product to use, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. And uh, I am excited to get back to work finally after having this computer gone for so long. It's been months, um, but again, I just didn't want to have to um, erase all my data. Luckily, I didn't have to. I'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Have an awesome day.